Hey, check it, it's me, Wizard Foo. Remember? Remember me? Remember this guy? Still making the game Load Ragger and still sharing my process with you. Programming, art, and music. Mostly programming right now. Check it out, what I'm working on now. The action system. So, I was inspired by Coco's 2Ds, Coco's 2DXs, whatever you want to call it, action system, where you can have a node that runs some actions, and um, it happens independently. You can just sort of launch that off and let the whole action system take care of running the action and completing it. What's an example of an action? Perhaps like this. When I use the one of the de debug commands, it shows that God Mode enabled text at the bottom there, and uh, flashes it red, and then waits for a while, and then fades it out. Let's see it again. There it is. Something else? Same thing. All these are the same effects. That is an action system. It's basically creating a label, running the action, and uh, and then, you know, if you want, deleting the label or else just reusing the label. In this case, it just reuses the label for later. So let's see what, how that works. Um, I, like I said, I was inspired by Coco Studio's action system, how they work, but I wanted to make it simpler to create and run actions. Um, so I came up with a system where uh, one of the main things about Coco Studio DX's system that I that I wanted to improve on was that Coco Studio DX's system required for every single action to create or action type, for example, act fading out something. Um, it would it, it required creating a separate class for every single one of those, which is super cumbersome in your C++ code. I decided instead to use enums. So basically, uh, there's an enum that describes all the action types I can run so far. And um, it's and simply there's a there's a generic action which can smartly run all those different types of actions and it's all based on this struct val. So how, let's take a look. Let's kind of like digest how this is all this all works. Let's go back to enums. Let's for example this, this first thing it's calling action sequence and then inside that action sequence it has some children. One of these is called action fade. Let's look at this action fade. Um, it's, it's got a C action fade which is its type. And then it's got 0.0, .0 which is this elapsed, or uh, sorry, it's duration for how long this fade is going to last. And then inside of these uh, braces is 0, the starting opacity, and 255, the ending opacity. You could argue that this is not a very clear way of creating actions. In fact, y y if you first look at this, you may not know exactly what the heck this means. But I wanted a condensed, concise type of system like this. So let's look at what this actually is. This this Putting these in braces right here is creating a standard initializer list. A standard initializer list is a C++ y way to just list a whole bunch of random arguments and throw them together into one basically iteratable, is that even a word? Iteratable uh, object. So um, the, the object, the, the, the action constructor, which is actually being called by fade there, is this one. Action, taking a type, the duration, and a standard initializer list of values. So here's the kind of the magic of this all is this struct val. Val can accept accept all these different types of uh, variables and store them all in this val uh, structure. Um, it does that using a type, which is just an enum, either null, float, a string, a color, or a vector three, and it stores them all as a union. So they're all accessible using the same memory, basically. And uh, a, but a variable can only be one of those types and store store its uh, memory. In that one place. So um, the, the magic here is in the way it uses constructors. So basically the standard initializer list right here is those things in the braces, the 0 and the 255. Those are going to both both come through as val. So it's it has to the what's going on under here underneath the hood is it's basically doing it's doing this. This is what's happening uh, implicitly by the compiler. It's calling val. Oh sorry, these are actually um, action vals. That's what's happening implicitly by the compiler implicitly con uh, casting the zero to an action val to fulfill the standard initializer list uh, constructor. So uh, that's it's all pretty simple as how the val actually creates. So let's go to action.cpp. We can look at the val. So basically, um, if you call the default constructor for a val, it's just no. If you call the float constructor, then it just Call, it's just initializes its float val, and the same thing for all the other types, because it's because these uh, are concrete types that you're passing in. Um, it knows exactly what constructor to use, and therefore val gets constructed as as it's supposed to. Um, there's also an operator equals um, 
so that it can, when it's actually op equaling itself versus another vowel, it knows exactly which one of these to type. So it can switch the type and say, all right, my vowel is going to be a color vowel or a stir string vowel or whatever. So um, here's that. Let's look at that constructor for um, for the fade. Here, this is using calling this one right here. It's actually calling it what's a uh, parent constructor for action type and duration, which is this one here. Just basically sets its type, sets its elapsed to zero, sets its duration, clamps it though, clamps it so that every one of these, every single one of the action types actually has a minimum duration, which is float epsilon, which is basically the smallest floating point variable you can possibly have other than zero, so that it can basically, uh, when, I, when I actually passed in um, zero for the action fades duration, it's actually it's actually float epsilon as the duration, so that when it updates or ticks the different actions, it can actually take a very tiny slice of its delta and assign it to that action rather than uh, um, just calling it with zero. So after it does that, initializing it with the type and the duration, it goes and pushes back into its values vector every one of the vowels that have been passed. And then there's another action constructor which actually takes children as well. So for example, a sequence, let's look at this one. Uh, this is actually calling all of this, all of these actions here are inside another action called action sequence. Action sequence takes no duration. It simply has all its children here. Here's that, that first brace. Here's its closing brace, opening and closing right here and here. Um, and then, so it lists all these different actions in between. Um, those get turned into another standard initializer list of actions, which are the children, and then it goes and pushes them all back. And it also smartly goes and adds the child duration to those kinds of things so that that's why you don't pass a duration in when, you're, when you have children. But there is another one that can take values as well as children. So that would be, for example, re repeat. Repeat is an action that has children um, but also has a value, which is the number, the value is the number of times it's going to repeat that sequence of children. So let's look at what actually happens. It, when it goes to update, it, this all updates itself from the tick, the main tick, which is part of KitFu, and calls action update on the parent node of all other nodes. And then that parent node goes and loops over its children and calls update for all those nodes too. Basically what it's doing is passing down the current delta for the tick and calling one of the action functions. So the action functions are all listed here in this map, and then they are all uh, correspond to different action functions right here. So what this means is that all these actions are tight. They're concise. They're all here in this one file, action.h and action.cpp. There's not a whole bunch of just um, clunky classes laying around for each one of these actions. It's a simple, look how simple this function is for showing. It's only three li four lines long to call action show rather than if this were a class this would be 20 lines long or so and more cumbersome more code to maintain this is nice and simple so there you have it that's how actions work um, yeah and so basically when it when update calls delta it goes and then um, applies that delta to the current um, action type however that action type takes the delta to mean for example uh, the simple one is the fade we were talking about already and this takes the current elapsed amount of time divides it by the duration to get a percent for that action being complete and then mixes the current the uh, starting opacity with the ending opacity which is those two values that were inside the brace that we were talking about earlier 0 and 255 those are what it mixes together to come at its current opacity, which is just calls node.set opacity to set. So there you go. That's it. Action system. And this is all uh, outside of Cocos 2DX, so I'll never I won't have to use Cocos 2DX's action system anymore, which means I could pretty much cut away a whole bunch of source files out of Cocos 2DX now that I don't need this anymore. The action system, I, I mean. So there you go. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.